Hey, no peeking yet. We're about to get an exclusive look at a very exciting new car. It's a supercar for the new generation. Don't go anywhere. The clock is ticking to 2030 and the UK ban on the sale of petrol and diesel cars. And the question we get asked a lot is what happens to the cars that are designed to be as noisy, theatrical and as fast as possible? The supercars. What do you do when a fire spitting petrol V8 is the heart and soul of your machine? Well, if you're McLaren, you do this. Say hello to the Artura. Altura is what McLaren is calling a high-performance hybrid, HPH, and it provides all the excitement and all the performance that you would expect from the brand. But it also does 19 miles on electric only. So this is proof that we can have exciting cars on our roads after the ban, which is still nine years away. Being a hybrid, it combines petrol and electric power, of course. The Artura has a plug-in system with a 7.4 kilowatt hour battery and a three litre twin turbo V6 petrol engine that's new for McLaren. Don't forget all the other cars in McLaren's range are turbo V8s. The engineers say that the electric motor provides a torque infill, which is their way of saying that it provides a punch of instant acceleration as soon as the driver demands it. It's also the first supercar to be built around the company's new spangly carbon fibre chassis known as the McLaren Carbon Lightweight Architecture or MCLA for ease. Now that's the structure that McLaren says has been optimised for all the electric bits and the chassis is being built in an area more famous for its steel in Sheffield. Now let's not forget though, the Artura is not the first hybrid car that McLaren has produced by any means. However, it is the first one that you can plug in and more on that a little bit later. We had in 2012, the P1, which had limited electrified running. And then of course, there is the bonkers Speedtail, also another hybrid. There's no denying this is a great looking car. Chat to the design team and you hear lots of phrases like technical sculpture, fluid and functional jewelry, which is car designers speak for head turning and drop dead gorgeous. Now it has a completely new interior. I mean, it looks absolutely incredible. I'm also very happy to say that it's possible to find a seating position in these new sport seats that suits smaller drivers, like quite a few women and a couple of men, of course. Um, I know Ginny actually needs a cushion to reach the pedals of the 720S, so she's very happy with this. It's really nice, there's plenty of room for two. There's also high definition screens, and I love the way that this eight inch screen is actually angled towards the driver, and you get an all new infotainment system, which has been a bit of a bugbearer of McLaren in the past. I also love the driving mode selection, which actually moves with the steering wheel. I think we can kind of think of this as a comfy race car, paired back, but not without its luxuries. The Artura has proper supercar proportions. It's low to the ground with the passenger compartment far forward and is unmistakably a McLaren. Styling and aerodynamics go hand in hand and this car is a masterclass in how to do it. Channels carved into the body control the flow of air to help create optimum aerodynamics and then there are hidden door ducts which also help guide the air into the right places just down here. But now let's take a look at the back. Okay, so we've got a really nice deep diffuser at the back and twin exhausts. Now it comes in a choice of three colours, flux green, very nice, ember orange and plateau. Now the roof can also be gloss black if that takes your fancy. But now that we've had a good look at the thing, we thought we would ask you guys exactly what you want to know. Well, thank you guys for all of your questions. We've had loads, uh, but we have sifted through and picked out the best ones. First one is, where does the Artura fit in the McLaren lineup? Well, unfortunately, that's an easy one for me to answer. This sits above the GT, but below the 720S. So it sits in the supercar category, um, and it's gonna be on the road priced at about 182,000 pounds. Oh, I like the next question, numbers. Give us numbers. With pleasure, we will because these are the kind of numbers that we like. Now, throttle response was top of the list of objectives that the team had when they developed this car. And of course, hybrid powertrains are just great for this. The Artura has a throttle response, which is twice as sharp as the V8s. 
very impressive. Other numbers for you. Well, it's a three litre twin turbo V6. It has 680 PS, 720 Newton meters of torque. Nought to 62 takes bang on three seconds. And it tops out in excess of 200 miles per hour. Not bad, right? And obviously you get a much better fuel economy too. An emissions of 129 grams per kilometer of CO2. Is it all wheel drive? Well, no. I'm hanging out with these rear wheels because it is rear wheel drive. And I know that's made quite a few of you very happy. However, there is some speculation that it wouldn't be that hard to get the electric motor to power the front axle and make it an all wheel drive. However, that is speculation. And uh, well, the Porsche 911 Turbo might get some sleepless nights over it. Next question, tell me more about the battery and electric side of things. Well, the 7.4 kilowatt hour battery gives electric power at speeds of up to 75 miles an hour, which is great. And you're gonna get 30 kilometers. That's about 18, 19 miles of pure electric range. Now, it isn't skateboard configuration. This is a small, lightweight battery, so it doesn't warrant that. Instead, it sits right behind the driver and passengers in a carbon fiber safety cell. It's the lowest internal point of the car to help with weight distribution. And this battery is geared towards energy density to give good range. And it also has a power output of 95 PS. Amongst the different driving modes is EV only. And in this one, the engine is switched off and disconnected from the transmission. The battery is guaranteed for six years and charging takes two and a half hours from a wall box or a three pin plug. Now, batteries are heavy, but McLaren make lightweight cars. So how have they tackled this? Good question, because a lot of you have been asking this. Well, the good news is, is that the Artura has class leading weight. It's 25 kilos lighter than a Hurricane, but has a full hybrid powertrain. And it's also 40 kilos lighter than the V8, with a dry weight of just 1,395 kilos. Pretty impressive. So how have they done this, I hear you ask? Well, they've used a lot of carbon fibre, of course. They're also very clever. Take a look at the panels, for example. Well, there aren't many separate ones, and that saves weight. And that new V6 engine is lighter, it's more compact, and the whole chassis has been designed with the battery in mind. There is also a bit of weight saving in these seats. So there's lots of small savings that add up to a much bigger difference. Another question we had is, where's the name come from? Why no numbers? Well, McLaren say that Artura is a fusion of art and future. Beautiful design backed by technology and everything is there for a reason. Why no numbers? Well, that's about establishing the car as its own unique thing. And as there's no more sports series, well, it's just time to move on. Next question, has it got a plug? Let me think about that. Yes, of course it does. It's a plug-in hybrid. Please do not put fuel into this part of the car. It is going to go wrong. This is where you plug it in. That will give you the 19 miles of electric driving and will, of course, bring down those CO2 figures. So another question we've had is, what is it like to drive? Haha, -ha, well, um, I don't know. That's because McLaren aren't letting anyone have the keys at the moment, but you will be the first to know as soon as we do. However, we can make a few conclusions and it bodes well. Like the other cars, it has McLaren's proactive chassis control featuring adaptive damping, which gives stiffness in corners, but great comfort in a straight line. They've described the platform to me as blistering. Excellent. And that brings us on to the tires. They are cyber tires. Yep, specially designed Pirelli P0s, which are bespoke for this car and feature cyber car tire technology, apparently. Now that actually means that they've got a microchip in them to help with calibration. We are thinking race car technology on the road. So we've just got one question left to answer. And this is from David on Twitter. And he would like to know, will McLaren take a trade on a 2014 iX35 with 110,000 kilometers on the clock? Hmm, David, let me get onto that one for you. Right, who do I speak to about trade-ins here? Lando? Daniel? 
Well, there you go, our first look at the drop-dead gorgeous McLaren Artura. We hope you like it just as much as we do at electrifying.com. And this is just the start of our relationship with this car. I promise as soon as we actually get the keys, we are taking it to a track and we will share that with you. So do keep watching. Thank you again for staying with us. And in the meantime, do subscribe to electrifying.com.